Let me testify. Na na na. Na na na. Na na na. Let me testify. What's happening, everybody? Okay. Some of you know me, some of you don't. If you're watching this video and you've actually seen a few of my other videos, you may not recognize me. I've cut my hair, giving it back to the ancestors um, in solidarity of support of a very, very beautiful loved one in my life. All right, get to that some other time. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about today is diabetes. Yes, I of all people, a Sabi Knight, a Dr. Sabi follower, was hit with diabetes here back in late August of 2017, this year. And it's been one hell of a ride. It has been one crazy ride. Um, I was out of the country doing business and it was, it came, came full head, well, it was in full motion. The diabetes, the onset of uh, diabetes, ketoacidosis. I think that's the way it's pronounced. Please forgive me if I don't have the terminology pronounced correct. Um, as it's all new to me and it's becoming something of the past. That is said, why? Because um, <laughs> doctors told me that this was going to be a lifelong sentence. And I'll explain that to you. Um, again, I said, I was in Honduras on business and my business constituent looked at me and asked, could he take my blood sugar and, diet and uh, blood pressure? And I um, thought that was a bit strange. And I asked him, well, you know, why? Um, he says, you have all the telltale signs of being a diabetic. Are you a diabetic? I told him, no, I'm not. But I knew something was wrong and I knew it was along the lines of that. Because I had talked to a few people before I left the, state, uh, the States and it was pretty bad before I left. It was, I was urinating a lot. I mean, a lot. Lee, there's no exaggeration. I had to be urinating 30 times a day. Oof. Gosh darn it. I weighed 237 pounds when this all started. And I got down to 160 in less than two weeks. Two weeks. In less than two weeks, 160 pounds. Boy, you're talking about something crazy. I didn't think it would. Hit, I didn't think it would hit me. But you know what? I'm lying. It should have hit me, because why? I fell off the wagon of Sabi. And you know what? For you, for those of you people out there struggling, let me let you know something. You're not by yourself, and you didn't commit a crime. I've known Savior since I was a little boy. Met him again as a grown man. He got rid of my cancer many years ago, stage four prostate and colon cancer. And I had a great strict vegan life from that point up until a few years ago. I was starting to dibble a dabble in all kind of crap, eating wise, junk food, cakes, cookies, sweets, pastas, things I had no business eating, man. And then you, get, you travel like I do, get down to the South, South Carolina, Texas, and places that I go to and live, it's over. <laughs> it's over. Oh, man. I, you know, testify along with confession. I, I ate food that I had no business eating. Yes, I ate meat. I did. And it was not right. It was not good. And I paid for it. So I set myself up for this diabetes attack, on onslaught of diabetes. And the way it came on, doctors tried to give me a number of reasons as to why it came on, and they couldn't really explain it. And then I started getting into some research real quick once I got better. Um, keep in mind, this happened late August, um, late August. By September 18th, I was in ICU being pumped full of poison, full of poison. Um, anybody knows anything about diabetes? I went into the hospital with my A1C, A1C reading which is the blood test reading of your life for three months, uh, at 13.7. Um, 
my blood sugar was 600. Um, my ketones was 8.0. Um, it was all kind of bad things. I was looking at renal failure. Just an array of things that people who follow SAVI should never hear, or would never hear, in fact. Not should, they would never hear if you would heed to what SAVI said and did in the sense of healing. So I can't sit here and make this video and tell people, you know, I don't know what happened, I was following a regimen. No. To Sabi's credit, had I been following what he said, this video wouldn't be, be it wouldn't be being made. I'll be doing something else, talking about something else. The anniversary to pass back in August of his passing. Um, business, anything, but talking about other than having developed diabetes, type two. Which by the way, the hospital and the doctors are like, well, is he type one, type two? And I kept asking, what am I, type one, type two? What is, what is it that you guys got going on? And I was told and gave an explanation that there are three kinds of diabetes, okay? First diabetes that I was told is the more common one. It is the juvenile diabetes, you know, the onset from childhood or by birth, and you grow with it, type one diabetes. The second one is subtype one diabetes, which is brought on by disease. It could be it could be initiated, activated, if you will, by a bacteria, fungi, or a disease of some kind that can actually uh, throw off the ketones of the body, and which makes uh, helps break down the fats and the solid, the, the solid, the, the solids in the body. Excuse me. Uh, various things can be thrown out of whack, and diabetes can develop in that sense, brought on by disease. And then, of course, the third which is more commonly known as type 2 diabetes, which is brought on by what you're shoving in your mouth and lack of exercise and rest, all right? Which is the one that they say you can reverse. But the fact of the matter is, all three can be rid of, re reversed, pushed out of the body. I know this to be a fact because, again, when I went into the hospital, I had 600 sugar. All this is in paperwork, by the way. My ketones were off the charts. I had no um, potassium. Zero potassium. This is what the doctors are telling me. And again, anybody who wants to see paperwork, just type in there and, there and I'll grab the paperwork out the room, make another video and slap all that paperwork in front of you. It was crazy to me. No potassium, no magnesium, and um, forget the third one they said I didn't have, which was causing my liver and kidneys to shut down completely, completely. Eyesight was affected badly. Kidneys was just absolutely. Oof. Doctor said I urinated. Uh, I urinated away a great deal of my weight. Again, from 237. And I wasn't in the greatest shape at 237, by the way. <laughs> you got to admit, I've been out of shape for a long time. But 237 wasn't terribly out of shape. But 237 to 160 in less than two weeks. Insane. I was getting rid of every nutrient that I needed and didn't need, just urinating. And when I urinated, it was a bunch of bubbles in the toilet, not like the normal bubbles that you see in urination when you urinate. I'm talking like you took a soda and shook it up and poured it in a glass real fast and bubbles just everywhere. It bubbles like that, the air bubbles, just high air bubbles. At any rate, it was just really bad. And so I was, I was in ICU for four or five days, I forget at this point. They took blood constantly. Hands hurt, all that, from being pricked and poked on and blood sucked out of me. I was thinking, this is not, this is, this is not, this is not living right. Not to mention the, the ridiculous medical bill, it's like forty-seven thousand dollars. I guess it was like 10 grand a day. Just about, or just a bit over. It's crazy. I asked the doctor, I asked this one particular doctor, because it started to bother me about the amount of potassium they were pumping in me, these big bags, long bags, 
well over a foot long bag of potassium. I believe I had like 14 bags. I asked them, what happens if I get too much potassium? I had already been reading. I was laying in the hospital. And keep in mind, I had to, my eyesight was so bad that I was, I was this, pretty much this close to reading my screen. It was that bad. I'll tell you about the, the eyesight that's about 2019 right now, between 2015 and 2020. Actually, I'm better than that. Uh, I guess I'm pretty close to 2015 right now, eyesight. Whew. It pays when you know what to do and how to do it and then do it. It pays. There's a difference between um, those who have knowledge of power or, or should I say they have knowledge, but then there's applied knowledge. It's a difference between the people. Some people have the knowledge and don't do anything with it, and others have the knowledge and they make use of it. I asked this doc after reading, and his reply was, Mr. Pinkney, we're gonna release you from the hospital. Tonight, today, sometime this evening. I said, oh, that's great, that's great. And he proceeded to walk out. And I was like, well, hold on, hold on. You didn't answer my question about the, the, the dangers of too much potassium. He says, well, I've got, to, I've got to call. I'll be back. And took out of the room and didn't answer the question. Never answered the question. I'm looking at all these bags that they've been bringing in. And they had several more bags they wanted to give me. I was like, man, I'm, I'm not taking any more potassium because I'm not feeling right. My body's not feeling good at all. Something's wrong. I think I'm getting too much. So they decided they weren't going to give me any more bags. And what they were going to do is give me these pills. God, these pills were huge, uh, yellowish in color, I think they were. Eight of them. And they wanted me to take all of them at one time, just back to back. Eight of them. I said, man, are you guys nuts? Y'all done lost your mind? That's asinine. I'm not taking eight pills of anything at one time. That's like an uh, overdose, suicide. I said, I need to see the doc. So there's another doctor that was actually, you know, I prescribed that I take these potassium pills so I can be released from the hospital since... They, they, they weren't going to give me any more bags. It'd be quicker. It'd be a quicker ingestion of those pills. I was like, I'm not doing this. So the doctor lollygagging finally came in. I was like, doc, let me ask you something point blank. Did you instruct this nurse to come in here with those horse pills? Very tall, thick pills. Eight of them for me to take in just one setting, not like over a period of a few days. Maybe half a day, but like right now, back to back, just pop them in my mouth, drink something and swallow. What? He said, oh yeah, I said, man, it's not going to happen. Who the hell prescribed something like that? He said, well, these are potassium pills that we need to get in your system. And um, I said, what's the difference between the big bags and these eight pills? They're the same quantity of, 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 of amount of potassium. And you're forcing that into me faster so you can get me at the hospital? I said, this doesn't make no damn sense. And I said, just like that, this don't make any damn sense, man. I, I don't, I'm not getting this. I get it, but I'm not getting this. I get what you're saying, which makes no sense to me to do, to anybody. So they said, well, this is, this is our way. I said, you got no other way for me to get potassium in my body other than those two ways. Are you serious? He said, well, we do have this other way, but it's really nasty tasting. And, you know, I got some friends that stayed mad at me for a long time. Because I said, man, I don't, what is it? It's a powder. I said, a powder. Powder put into water and then you drink. I can fathom something like that. Yeah. Okay. You give me this powder, I drank it, done deal. They took some more blood. I was being released. Not long after being released, my toes started feeling crazy. Numbness in my two pinky toes was just growing numb. Amputation came to mind because when you don't get oxygen and electricity in your feet, that's nerve damage. That's, that's suffocating the nerves and the muscles and the tissues and it starts to die off and gangrene and whatever else settles in and there you go. You got a problem. Amputation. I remember being a young boy and I remember hearing about diabetes for the first time with Pearl Bailey. 
Pearl Bailey, as many people may not know or may know, she passed due to complications of diabetes way back then, years back. An amputation. I believe she was an amputee, and there was like soon after that, she was gone. I was like, oh no, that's, a, that's, that's some bad stuff there. It's crazy that they tell us that African Americans are inherently uh, subjected to being subjected to having diabetes, just, just natural for us. It's funny. It means the, the continent of Africa itself, full of quote unquote black people, melanated folks, or highly carbon people. And they have the lowest diabetes rates in the entire world. So how the hell do we have such a high rate here in America? Maybe like Savy said, and Dick Gregory. It's being introduced to us. It's been introduced to us. It's been designed as a designer sickness, specifically for this paint job. Doctor told me two things that I didn't like as they normally say. First thing the doctor said is that I was going to be a prisoner of time. And I said, explain that. When you're a prisoner of time, you have to get up every morning at the same time, eat at the same time, take your insulin at the same time, eat again at the same time, and then go to bed pretty much at the same time. Sounds like a job to me, a regular job in America. I said, okay. By the way, insulin was supposed to be five times a day. One long, one short, and three up and down for foods. Nuts. Didn't really work out for me too well. I'm not that guy. Next thing he said to me was that it was going to take six months to a year to get my blood level work in a suitable position that they would be happy with. And that would be between the ranges of 150 to 175 for me. I said, really? I said, what exactly is a normal range in the first place? He said, well, normal range is somewhere between 85, 80, 85, to about 110, maybe 125. You go to a big barbecue and eat like you know, lost your mind and you don't give a damn about life. 125 at most. And that's after eating. That's the sugar level reading in your body. They would be happy if I was at 150 on a regular basis, 275. I said, huh? This is going to take you about six months to a year to become acclimated to figuring this whole thing out on how you're supposed to eat. And the other doctor saying, he says, yeah, that's, he said, I have a hard time remembering to take vitamins, let alone having to be on a strict regimen like you're going to have to be for the rest of your life. And I was like, we're all on some sort of dietary makeup, so there's not nothing, nothing new. But, okay, I, I'm hearing you guys, blah, blah, blah. So I did, people, I did. I fell prey to the madness for five days. Five days I took synthetic insulin. Yes, I did. I took it for five days. And I'm ashamed. I know Sabi is talking about Raymond, you stupid bastard. <laughs> His heavy Honduranian voice and accent. Um... Five days, I shot myself in the stomach. Just 25 times I took insulin. Five times a day, times five days, 25, if my elementary math still serves me correctly. After that, or during the course, I was like, this is not right. After that, I was like, ah, I'm not doing this no more. Met a cat down at the farmer's market. I have to give credit what credit is due as an old white boy. But I also have to give credit what credit is due as well. Wayne Moore in Los Angeles from Texas told me about chia seeds. So I heard about chia seeds twice. And I've been eating chia seeds and stuff for years, but mm, it wasn't no major component. Oh, but it would become. You see, chia seeds in water, as I was told to do, let chia seeds sit for 30 minutes and then consume it, just drink it, would regulate my sugar level. I said, okay, sounds good. Maybe sprinkle a little cinnamon in there. I haven't got around to the cinnamon. Didn't seem to need to. 
But that's exactly what I did. When I got some chia seeds, put them in some alkaline or actually some spring water. And, and don't get caught up in the, in the water game. All this water is the same. There's three major water companies in the world, and they all slap subsidiary names on their water and sell it to you. But if you want to give yourself a fighting chance, drink out of glass bottles and not plastic. You give yourself a little bit of a head start in trying to preserve your life and staying away from BPAs and all the other chemicals. And no matter what anybody tells you, if it's made from plastic, it's made from a chemical. If it's glass, well, chances are it's pretty natural, unless it's lead filled. That being said and moving on, I took the chia seeds. When I was released from the hospital, I was at 343, 343 sugar level. That was high as hell, still. Should have been still in the hospital, but the question of potassium poison, I think it scared people and they released me. Not to mention, I think they were billing me for that for the most part of it. I think that's what they were really doing. So, my, my sugar level, and I was, ooh, mind you, I was weak. Oh, boy. If you could have seen me, there's a video on Facebook of me being asked a question. I look so bad looking back on that video. I look, I look like I had cancer or maybe even AIDS. I looked bad, and I was really sad. But at any rate, um, mm -hmm. man, I messed up, but I got back on track. You see, the doctor told me six months to a year, I would be grateful, I will be in good condition if I can get down to 150, 175. Sugar. And they would do an A1C test every three months to make sure I was, you know, doing good, get my ketones in place, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well. I took the, I took the chia seeds. Took a tablespoon. Took some water, put it in a coffee cup. Stirred it up real well. Your chia seeds will stick together. You gotta stir them real well. Vigorously. Harmoniously. <laughs> And let it sit, cover it, let it sit. 30 minutes. I let mine sit sometimes for hours at a time. Because it's gonna do this gelatination, this gelatin thing. It's gonna become somewhat like gel. Not too much, but it will be thicker. And that's fine. And just drink it. You can do the same thing with okra, by the way, too. It's gonna to have a really slimy texture. Most people can't get past that, so they don't deal with it, but it has the same effect. Take an okra, split it down the middle, Put in a glass of water, let it sit overnight, get up in the a.m. and pull the okra out. Probably want to go eat that later on. But drink the, drink the remaining portion. Mm-mm. Good. <laughs> Chia seeds is going to be a lot more palatable, all right? At any rate, um, I drank the chia seeds. Went on about my business. Waited two hours. Two hours. Took my blood level before and after. Blood level was three, three thirty something. I have the strip thing. I have the little meter thing. Beforehand, took the um, chia seeds. Waited two hours. Went about my business. Went and took my blood levels. Eighty five. Eighty five. I did it again, the chia seed drink, 87. I went to bed, got up, I did a fasting blood test, 97. It went up when I was sleeping. So I made me a breakfast, took my chia seed drink, Eight. Took it two hours later. Eighty-two. I thought I was on something. Now, this wasn't just the chia seeds by itself. I gotta give credit to where credit is due most. 
before taking the chia seeds, I had gotten a package from Honduras, La Ceiba, the Usha village. And the people there were so kind. Thank you to them. It was a bitters package, a diabetic package. Everything in it was bitter. CC4, Maya, Purifier, uh, DBT, all that stuff. Every last one of those I just named are bitters. How do I know? Well, that was saving for many, 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 many years. Not to mention I had a little inside help from an expert who knows just about everything there is to know about it. Someone from Sabi's camp. Someone from Sabi's family. Who shall remain nameless for privacy purposes and respect. At any rate, I talked to them and they were like, ooh, everything you just named is bitter. So I was like, yeah, and it's made for cutting sugar. I did that for about a week before taking the chia seeds. So my system was becoming acclimated to getting sugar out. Then I just did the chia seeds. And that was it. And that's all I've been doing. And for about mm, two and a half, three weeks maybe, I'll say about three weeks now, it's number chia seeds. Blood level has gotten to be no higher than 124. 100. Yeah, I'm thinking 124 is about the highest it's been. And that's been testing, eating some of everything. I had some... I'm not going to tell you some of the stuff I was testing it with, but I did. But it's out of my system now. And I'm back to what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. So, you want to get rid of diabetes? Get rid of the sugar. Now, mind you, I wasn't taking in much carbohydrates in the beginning. I wasn't taking any carbs. I mean, carbs or starches. It's just doing proteins, nuts and berries and fruits and stuff like that. I did have some egg whites. Um, and that's been cut out at this point, just don't need it. It's animal. But I was desperate not to have sugar in my body. But I did live a lot off of seaweed, a lot. The little seaweed snack packs and the long sheets. I should take stock out of them. So should you. Fruit and vegetables, amaranth, Quinoa, spirulina, spelt. I'm not so sure about Kamut anymore. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Baby kale, walnuts, almonds without the skin. Mm, not too keen on that one either, but wild blueberries from Whole Foods to frozen ones. Yep, frozen, I said. Think I'm joking, go to Whole Foods and look for the 365 brand. I, I'm not promoting their company, but I'm telling you what it actually, you can find a real blueberry, like the ones that stain your hands and your carpet and floors and your dog and anything else. Blueberries, 365 wild blueberries. Yes, throw that in your sea moss drink, blend it up and drink it. Mm -mm, delish. I'm up to 183 pounds. You can see that I'm small frame now. But I'm getting better though. Because I went from 160 to this now, so I'm good. I'm starting to see a little six pack, eight pack. I like that. But anyway, you can get rid of diabetes, people. Don't believe in madness. Don't. And they tell you to tell, you know, once you've been diagnosed as diabetic and you got it in control, you think you got rid of always call yourself a diabetic. Bullshit. You can get rid of diabetes. By the way, my ketone levels, negative in the blood. Zero, zero point two, or zero point two ketones. Yeah. They really have been asking me at the doctor's office, what are you doing? How are you doing this? You're not taking, you're not taking insulin? No, I'm not. You can have that stuff back. I make my own insulin. My own glucamines and all that. I'll make my own. I don't need this synthetic from wherever it's coming from. That's a problem. Where is, where is, where is this synthetic 
Where does it come from? How is it, how is it made? You got to ask yourself this, man. I'm cool. I'm good. So this is my video. I didn't intend for it to be this long, but like Sabi said, all things are curable. And the base of any sickness and disease is mucus. By the way, the onset of diabetes that they said I had, which I do believe because I had all the things going wrong. I drank water in Honduras from a faucet and, I bo and boiled water from a faucet. That only made what I was dealing with worse. So it wasn't from Honduras. It just got worse in Honduras. But thank the Creator for those people in Honduras that caught and thought enough to stop business and take me to a hospital. And that was one time I didn't mind going to a hospital to get a reading, you know, to get some paperwork and get me started. And after that, it's like, okay. I, I wanted to get to the Usha village. Didn't make it. But a phone call got me squared away. So with that said, done people, much love to you. Hold up to your lives. We don't celebrate peace like this separated. We celebrate peace like this together. I have a peace of mind. And I have peace for you. Thanks for listening. Have a great one. Till then.